Here's a quick glimpse of the car now. Let's see where we started. I'll talk to you guys later in the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video if you haven't done that already. Thanks for watching. All right, so this is kind of before and after in the same scene. And then this is the bug when I first got it. And this was in the condition it was in. Basically, it was completely disassembled. Uh, a friend of mine owned this uh, since the 1980s and he planned on restoring it and became ill in his 60s and couldn't uh, actually finish the job and then put it up for sale and another friend of mine told me that he was selling it and I just had to get it because you know it's really hard to find a early oval window that has uh, you know very little rust and you know it had some of course but very little in it when it comes to oval windows um, because they're just so old, you know, they, they rusted out pretty easily. So anyway. So like with the parts prices being so expensive, it, you know, it's, it's kind of a big deal now to even restore one. Uh, the parts like this piece, that piece that's rusted out there is like thousands of dollars, I think. Um, and, you know, and they're, they're only available in Europe. You have to have a connection somebody who's bringing a like a what do they call a container load over or you know or you can go to Wolfsburg West and buy it and it's gonna it's gonna be expensive so of course a lot of stuff I made you know you'll see later in the video I'm gonna show you all the details of it these are original fenders as you see here um, and they're really really hard to find in any kind of savable condition and those weren't too bad original tail lights were there so I had basically all the bones I actually had the emblem. This is the original gas tank for the car. It had been repaired at one point. Um, the whole bottom had been replaced on it, but didn't leak. I, I re went ahead and filled it with fuel. And it was fine. Uh, the uh, bat wing wheel was present. Uh, the horn button was not. So those are really expensive if you want to know. So anyway, yeah, uh, the wiring was in yeah, not the greatest condition. A lot of it was patched and broken, so I ended up having to replace that later, you see. Um, and that is not really rust on the sides. That looks like surface rust, but it's actually the metallics in the paint rusted because in the old days they, they had that weird stuff um, they used. So anyway, the, one of the most difficult parts in this job was this hood. So this hood was actually really difficult to repair because you had uh, inner and outer layers that were both bad. And, uh, you know, the, the job of doing that was actually really uh, difficult because you have, you have uh, two different angles of metal. And I don't have an English wheel or anything like that, so I had to just make it work without it. So I used a stretcher shrinker and did the best I could and then... Uh, you know, you got it as close as possible and use, of course, some filler. This inner panel was near impossible to make. I mean, but of course I did it and it actually turned out pretty good. You can't even tell. Nobody would ever know uh, that the hood was really in bad shape like this. But you might think, oh, just go buy another hood. These are, uh, these are actually really rare early oval. They have five mounting holes. So there's four for the hood bracket and then the fifth one for the long, extra long hood support. And they're not available. And I, mean, I think uh, actually now when I got, when I started this project, they, they weren't available. And now I think BBT in Europe is now making them. So yeah, I, I welded it all up and repaired it because it's also nice to have original metal. Uh, it is 19 gauge and the new stuff is 20. So it's, you know, they don't make the 19 anymore. So. Anyway, but the ones from BBT are actually really nice. They fit really good, uh, unlike some of the other ones. You can notice I use like tape and stuff like that to get straight lines. You can use a, you can also use a Sharpie. Um, I just used tape because it was easy and I had some. And then uh, cutting this little corner section right here in the hood was actually very, quite difficult. I had to use several different pieces to make it and to shape it um, so I you know again I, trying to shape that piece without uh, using any seams or welding um, would be very difficult if not impossible to do um, you know what you could be it could be done you'd have to use 
Um, you have to make a press for it and uh, use a press and then bend it and then I, I really don't know. You'd have to do a lot of different techniques to get that to work. That's a very difficult piece to make. So I just did that. I slit cut it and then uh, welded up the slits and uh, turned those. You made it so, so it bent the angle I needed and then when I'm all done and filled in, it's fine. You know, it's an area that you really can't see it. It's behind the hinge. So when the hood's on the car, it's very difficult to get in there. You have to take your head and go underneath to look up and you really can't see anything. It looks perfect now. So anyway, getting the hood to fit correctly was difficult. Um, so when I took it out and put it on the car, um, I didn't really have to do much to it. I kind of went with by eye because there's really not many other ways to do that because it's the angles and everything. I set it on the car, checked it, and before I put the filler on, and uh, it was pretty much in spec. So yeah, the the hood was actually really tough to do, and I actually got it pretty nice again. Uh, and those are really common areas to get rust on these early ovals. Uh, 54, 55, and earlier. Even the split windows had issues with the hoods in the same area because water or whatever would get behind in there in rust. And I don't, I don't know at this point if they were dipping the cars. I'm not sure that they were. I think that happened later. So they were doing minimal areas. And there was a, another random rust hole there behind the, uh, behind the, there was a, I don't know, a piece of, uh, trim there and behind there it was rusted so hopefully the planes didn't bother you i get some planes flying over i'm kind of near march air force base and uh it, it you know it's weird they don't really fly over this area but they fly um typically fly over this area they fly over further away but when they're turning i guess the thrust kind of comes this way and the sound does and inside my house i don't hear anything at all that's funny and outside you can hear them a little bit but anyway, yeah, because I'm out in the garage now just uh, doing this narration. I don't have a studio or anything like that. It's just basic YouTube is all I do. So anyway, I stripped the whole thing to bare metal. You know, this hood was, like I said, there was a lot of ripples in it. And I did a lot of hand pounding and uh, basically did a lot of metal finish to it. But yeah, I did a skim coat of filler over the whole thing. Uh, so it wasn't that much at all, really. I mean, everywhere I put filler, I, I never go more than about a quarter of an inch. You know, a lot of people, you know, there's no, a lot of people say, you know, you shouldn't use filler. Filler is no good. It's like, it, it's fine. There, there's really no reason to not use it as long as you don't put it on too thick. It says right on the, you know, on the can, no, you know, don't please more than a quarter inch. If you stay under that, you're fine. Uh, so, and, and even if you put it on a little thicker than that in, in certain places, it's not going to be an issue as long as it's not a stressful area and stuff like that. So anyway, there's all these, if you follow the rules and you do it right, you know, it'll last even if you use filler. You know, there's a, it's just, filler gets a bad reputation because uh, I guess guys put it on the wrong way and too thick and they, you know, they have this old saying, well, Bondo always cracks and it's really not true. Bondo doesn't crack <laughs> unless it's done incorrectly. So if you see here, there's the filler I'm using. Uh, I used a, a lot of AG47. In that particular area, I was using Auto Art. Uh, I'm not gonna use Auto Art anymore. I didn't, there's a couple of things. It doesn't handle stress as well as AG47. So I prefer the other, and, and it doesn't really matter on the oval because um, the, there's no stress areas where I have it on, but on other things I've had it where it's kind of stressful. So I'm not going to use it anymore. The AG47 seemed to work a little bit better. Sands good, sands faster. AG47 is by USC. And uh, so a lot of people don't know who that is. Uh, neither do you know who Auto Art is. It's a great paint company. They make really nice material out of Florida. So anyway, hand pounded this back. This is again, this is the original deck lid for the car. Uh, original hood was for the car. Original uh, three of the original fenders were original to the car. Um, they'd never been replaced. It had, you know, original paint on them inside and out. So, yeah, it was pretty neat to see one like that. The rims, I don't have any idea. I don't think they were date stamped correct at all. You know, I, I think they were just all over the place. 
And then that's after some primer, you know, it's working pretty straight. So yeah, there was a, I had to remove all the insulation because underneath that insulation, a lot of times there's rust. So you have to remove it all. And uh, this is, I'm doing, uh, this I'm using a shrinking hammer with a shrinking dolly underneath it. And what happens is you can actually hammer right on the dolly when normally a lot of people hammer on the dolly and you're not really supposed to. It's supposed to hammer on the high area of the dolly, of the area and have the dolly on the low. And uh, when you do that, you, you know, it, 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 if you don't, if you hammer right on the dolly, you're going to stretch the metal and you're going to have more issues. You're going to have to use a lot of shrinking methods to get it back. So you're not really supposed to do that. The apron, of course, it was original and I saved it. And if you can see it, somebody had cut out the areas for the for uh, dual exhaust and it came with a single pipe. So I'm putting it back to that. Eventually, I'm going to have that done and I'm not done with that yet. But uh, I had to fix these. Uh, I bought those new before and I wasn't happy with the thickness of the metal and the quality of them. I thought they were kind of really too thin. So I just decided to save the original ones. Uh, and for what the cost of them are, I just thought it was kind of, they weren't made very well. Uh, you can always send your comments. So, and listen, don't forget to push the like button. Uh, don't forget to uh, put a comment down. It really helps the video get some uh, traction. So make sure you do that. I appreciate it guys that are watching my normal subscribers and you guys who are new um, subscribe to the videos uh, to, to see more there's actually going to be more going on with this car in the future i'm not quite done with it but uh, we'll show it's pretty nice at the point at the end there was just some issues with the back when i welded that uh, i didn't have it up on the lift and uh, i actually missed a spot I missed my didn't get a good penetration weld i actually missed and so that part of the problem with welding is it's not you know it's just being able to see and I'm older and I can't see very good anyway so you know my eyes are not the greatest you know not like they were when I was younger and uh, I missed the missed the spot where I was supposed to have the torch happens a lot I had a lot of problems with that uh, on yeah I still do now but uh, yeah even when I was doing this I you know, I put it up there and go, shoot, I missed the spot. Because you got to get both sides of the metal. You can't just get just one. You got to get, it's got to be on both pieces of metal. It has to melt them both, you know, to make it work. Get good penetration on both surfaces. Kind of hard to do. I mean, not really, but it is, you know, when you're older, you can't see as good. When you're younger, your eyes are better. And, you know, light doesn't, you know, work as well as it used to. So. Yeah, I've got, uh, this was a pretty bad little pitted area, really thin, thin pitted, and it had pinholes in it, so I had to replace it back there. The roof I used, um, this is Citrus Strip, where it works really good if you cover it, um, if you cover it and leave it overnight, and I was able to get that to bare metal pretty, not too bad, it was a couple coats of it, and that was it. In fact, I would reuse it, I would just take and, uh, I put it back on a knife with the with the paint chips all in it and everything and just smear it over it and it would still keep going still keep stri stripping so that stuff works okay doesn't work on really uh like urethane heavy two-part urethanes and stuff like that very well it doesn't work on clear coats very well but it does work on old material for something like this worked it actually not bad so i wish they didn't outlaw the other stuff but i don't know so this was a pretty good size repair here. It was actually not hard to do. Just lay one over the other one and uh, get a pattern going um, and put it in there. Then this again, these had the same thing as the back. It had really thin areas along the edge of the, where the fender was, because I guess it was raw metal for a long time or something. And then the bottoms of the fenders, are all, almost always this area is bad. But the funny thing is the heater channels weren't really that bad. There was one heater channel that was kind of had some issues. I had to do the bottom. You'll see a little bit in the future here. And the other one was not really that bad at all. It was actually really good shape. So this piece here, again, you could buy that whole section. It's kind of expensive. But uh, just repairing it that way was actually pretty good. Worked really nice. I'm using my spot welder, stud welder, 
putting studs on, pulling the dents out, and uh, got that pretty much almost metal finished in that area. And I use a really thin coat of filler. In fact, I think I use just glazing on it. A lot of the fill, a lot of the filling I've did with only glazing, it didn't even have bondo or you know or plastic regular plastic filler. It was just glazing because it was so thin. So anyway, the doors, eh, they had some bad spots in them, and they're really primitively made in the '54 year. There's a lot of uh, that that line there in the middle actually variates a lot. And then this had a little rust hole in the bottom. And of course, um, I had to do the outside and the inside section. So I think I did a lap job on the inside and then butt welded the outside. So it didn't really need to be lap welded or butt welded on the inside inner panel. Come out perfect without it. A lot of guys always want to butt weld everything, you know, but you don't really have to. It just depends on what you're doing and how you want it to look. If it's an area that matters, then do it. You know, if it doesn't, then I don't know, you can do it or not do it. It just depends on you. So anyway, taking the body off the pan, that's when I noticed at this point, uh, not too far in, that I was going to just do resections of the, I didn't think the heater channel was that bad until I looked right here. And then that's when I saw the bottom of the heater channel was pretty wasted. And a couple of repairs on it. Could have replaced the whole thing, but, you know, decided to just uh, repair it. And this side heater channel was in great shape. Uh, but this was a lead fill job that was done on it before. It was actually lead filler on there. People go, oh, lead lasts forever. It was cracked. Um, no, it doesn't last forever. No, nothing lasts forever. Uh, even, I think that if you do a good job with plastic filler, it'll last just as long as lead. And that's my opinion, uh, and I'll stick to that. I, I've done lead before, and it's not a forever repair. It doesn't last forever. That's why some guys go, oh, that's permanent, you know, whatever. It, it, it just, you know, say what you want to say, and it's fine for you, but not for everybody, guys. It's up to you if you want to use lead. You know, lead is a real pain in the butt to put on, and it's real hard to, you know, to, to use a Vixen file. You file it off. It's really hard to file. It takes a lot of time, and you finally get it to where it's straight and everything else, and then, you know, same as Bondo or filler, you know, plastic filler ends up cracking over time so or cracking or shrinking or there's a hundred different things happen with lead is so as well as uh, bondo or plastic filler so this was a this could again this could have been replaced but uh, I didn't really thought I thought it wasn't necessary I just went ahead and fixed it and was able to get to look a hundred percent and be plenty strong so there's no reason to replace the whole thing and nice heavy coat of uh, this was Tamco primer we're using. First time I used uh, I used uh, two different products. I used one called uh, Chameleon. It's a German uh, paint product. I use their uh, I use their uh, what's it called uh, epoxy primer as an underbed, and then I used a non DTM over that. And the non DTM is real high build, uh, so that's why you have to use a epoxy primer. Um, but Tamco has one that does both. So their urethane primer actually is really high build and it has super good adhesion. So it's really nice. It's kind of expensive now. They, they, the prices went up quite a bit during the pandemic. So again, I'm, I don't know what I was doing here. Oh, just moving the body out to work on it. And then I'll get back on the pan. Uh, but I wanted to get the fender sanded, start getting it painted, I think. I, I don't know what I was doing at this point, but... Um, Always fun to transition when I have such a small area to work in. Really hard to keep organized and all that together. Oh, I think, yeah, I had to have the air chisel inside the garage. I don't like the air chisel outside. It's very loud. And I wanted to do that out inside the garage so my neighbors don't get mad. Because they've gotten mad before when I was air chiseling. Is I mean, it is really loud. So definitely try and make your neighbors happy if you're going to do anything like this. It's... Really, it's not hard to do. It really isn't. So I just did it inside the garage, cleaned up the trans. I didn't rebuild the trans. Um, there really wasn't, I wanted to go ahead and put it in and test it. I put it in and tested it and there was no issues with the transmission. So I, I haven't really driven it that far yet, but 
Uh, again, I need to do more work to the engine. Those are all future videos coming up. Again, if you haven't subscribed, you won't want to do that. So check those out. So the brakes went on. Um, you know, this thing had really, really low miles. I really don't think, I don't even know if the brakes, I mean, they might have been original. Stuff was all German that was there. Original drums, they were original. Never had been replaced. The tie rod ends, all that stuff was super tight. Never had been replaced. So I really don't think this car had very many miles on it at all. So anyway. So a lot of people might think, oh, just an oval window. Um, you know, the early oval window, which is 50, early 55 and earlier, were much more expensive to build. So you had 53 and a half and 54 and early 55 were much more expensive. The parts are different. The cars are, you know, they have the bat wing steering wheel. So a lot of things are shared with the split window on these. So a lot of people just go, oh, it's just another oval. It's, no, this is way more expensive and way more desirable to own. You know, they, they didn't make as many of the earlier ovals and they did 56, 57, they made a lot more of them. So anyway. So around the painting, you know, I'm blowing a coat of base on. Uh, I, you know, what I did is I had uh, two different uh, coats of base. So I shot on an a undercoat for coverage because uh, they accidentally sent me, well, they sent me a, a mismatched gallon that was terribly off. In fact, both gallons I got were terribly off and I had to rematch them. So I went and had to buy some other uh, toners and then just start working on it till I got it really tight. And if you notice here coming up, um, I'll, I'll, you'll see the door and the center section of the door, basically there's one little area in the door in the center that I did not paint. So you can see I'm painting and I did not shoot anything on that center section of the door. All that is right there is that's clear. So if you see there, there's very, very little difference and I'm showing right here, those are chips still in the paint and uh, in the old paint. So it's very, very close color to the original. Not many people have matched it that tight because, I, you know, not many people can spend that time. You know, I spent like a couple of weeks in just getting the color right. So, you know, you take it to a paint store and they're not going to spend that kind of time. They're just going to, you know, go up, there you go. You know, here's your match. And you look at it and you go, wait, that's not the same. And, uh, you know, that's the way it is. So that's all you get. Unless you want to pay a lot of money. You know, those guys, the time is money. So if you're going to have a really good match, you're going to have to pay a painter to do it. And you're not going to get just a paint store to give you the match. They're not going to give you the same thing. So this match is right on the money. Really tight. And the funny, funny thing is, in a lot of videos, it looks a lot bluer than it does in person. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, like in the different camera angles, I think at the beginning of the video and the end, it shows pretty much the color because I had it in the shade. But you know, when I'm shooting these, it was just like however the whoever it was sitting, I didn't like try and move it and put it in the perfect lighting. I, I just didn't have that kind of time for that. So uh, last minute, I had to. I found this. I, I knew this rust was there, but I just kind of ignoring it. Then I realized, you know, I'm gonna have to fix it. So this windshield rust. Of course, the windshield fit perfectly. There was no issues. Uh, with the bottom or the top. Yeah. Always leave the rubber on. That's what I always say. When you do a restoration and you're going to do like a windshield area or a window around the windows, you can have rust to repair. Leave the old rubber on and just see, take the, take the, when, take the glass and just put it in place. Or if you have the new, have the new rubber there and then go through and set it in place and make sure that all of it goes in. So it's easier with the old because it's already compressed a bit. So you can tell if it's gonna fit and check it again before you get done. See under here, this is actually, people said, oh, I'm painting over rust. That's actually not rust. It's actually rusted metallic paint. <laughs> so the metallics were painted and then I shot uh, a coat of, uh, that was epoxy primer to, to encapsulate it and keep it from, you know, keep it, keep it from, keep, you know, keep it protected under there. So I shed epoxy primer and painted underneath. Uh, didn't really have to do it, but you know, I just wanted to do that. So 
anyway. Showing a little bit of real time painting here. You know, it takes a lot of time really to do a good job. Uh, turn your material down really slow. You know, a lot of guys go really fast when you're doing a, when you're in a body shop and you've got a car that's in good shape. You can go over it a lot faster than you can when it's old and you're trying to restore it. It's a restoration process is a little bit different than when you're in a body shop. I used to do that a long time ago. I worked in a body shop as a painter and you know, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to do it for my for my full-time job so I actually left the industry and they, people got shocked that were you know my manager the body shop manager um, I just got awarded this the I was 21 years old and I'd already been a painter somebody else and, and, and they didn't believe me when I told them I knew how to paint and I had worked at several I worked at another uh, shop that had several locations and I was actually a painter's helper at that point and I was actually uh, Used to, they used to send me to all the different locations because everybody would get behind. And because I was so fast as a painter's helper, they just couldn't, they'd never seen anything like it. Because I go, well, I already know how to paint. I'm a painter. I, this is all, you know, I can do the job, you know. And, and so I was bouncing around. They, some some locations didn't have a painter. And they go, oh, why don't you come to the painter at Laguna de Gal? And I was like, it's too far to drive. I don't want to drive all the way out there. And I didn't live there. And uh, so I was like, no. And then, uh, you know, and it was all BMWs, and the people there were just kind of a pain in the ass, the customers were, so I just was like, eh, don't really want to do it. I'll just stay where I'm at, and then uh, I got the, then the other guy, they fired the other painter, and they said, well, okay, well, it's all yours, and I'm like, oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> I was like, what? I was done with it. I just, you know, it was just, the whole industry was changing, the materials were changing, the, you know, the and the, you know, it was funny, it's 25 years later, one of my friends is a painter in a body shop, and I said, so what is it pay per flat or eight hour now? And he goes, oh, 15 bucks. And I said, dude, that's what it was back when I was doing it in the in the 90s, or, or the late 80s. I said, that's ridiculous. They keep on, the body shop owners are making millions of dollars a year, and the guys working there are sometimes making nothing. Just depends on the shop, but I mean, there's some good ones out there, but it's really hard to get in there and, and do that. I'm showing here the, the area, you can see the original paint there, very little difference. I mean, cause I didn't blend it or anything. You can see the spray edge around it, but the color is actually the same. So anyway, yeah, that's how good I matched it. So I had a few places in here. Steering wheel, decided to just do a restoration paint job on it, sand it down, put some high build on it, uh, fixed all the areas that were bad and just Gave it a nice coat of base and clear. Made that color too. The ma uh, matched it as close as I could. And then uh, just went ahead and went with that. The, kind of a gray color steering wheel was. I think the the center horn button, I think it's ivory. So it's weird. It doesn't it doesn't match the steering wheel. So when I finally get one, it'll be a while before I get it, but I think they're uh, $150. They're not bad. That's $150 for that, $300 for each, three, $400 for each bumper. You know, I've got about two grand or so to spend. And really, you know, it's just a long story in the economy right now. It's just been not been good for work. So anyway, I'm just doing YouTube mostly at this point. So, and it's not enough to live on. Anyway, we got, uh, you know, the fender's going back on, cars, you know, it's, the assembly process was very slow. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, just every little piece that I had to put on had to be refitted, remachined. Um, you know, just everything was just so old and, and decrepit. You know, it just took a long time to assemble the parts. You know, new screws on as much of it as I could. You know, a lot of it I use stainless. So anyway. The rubber parts, of course, you know, the quality of that stuff is just not the same as it was back in the day. So you just have to make everything fit. You know, there's nothing just, you know, nothing just goes right in it. I mean, I've gotten parts that are so bad that, you know, they put them on and you know, two years later, they're just junk. They just, you know, the rubber stuff, some of that stuff. I mean, and I try and get the best stuff as I can, but you know, sometimes the 
premium stuff is just so unaffordable. It's just crazy. It's 10 times the amount of other places. So I did my own headliner. Uh, I actually had this headliner that came with the car. He had it for so many years just inside the car and I was kind of worried that the wrinkles that were in it were gonna not look good. It ended up looking pretty darn nice. Came out really good. And uh, the magic is right there. That's the steamer. You steam it and really spend your time steaming it at the end. And boy, that just sucker just stretches right out. You put the glass in, call the trim in the glass. It's always fun. Yeah, and then um, I actually made the glove box. I'll show you later. Uh, you'll see uh, it's actually yeah, paper mache. And uh, it can be painted, whatever, at that point. Uh, they don't really make, they make a, a ABS glove box and I didn't really want one. I wanted it to be, you know, at least made out of something similar to the original material. Yeah, I did, um, seat frames, I uh, did not come with seats when I bought the car. Um, that was one of the things that was missing and that is a big deal. On an early oval, they're very expensive. Um, one of my friends was selling a set and I couldn't buy them. He, he wanted, I think it was $3,000 for a set seats and I was like I dude I can't do that so I had to piece them together you know I had to get a seat bottom for one guy one guy from uh from Colorado uh really nice guy had the seat bottom he saved it from another place and then uh he is commutes back and forth to another state to work uh, interesting we were talking on the phone for a while and so I paid him and then it took six months to get it because we found out shipping just went through the roof and so we waited and a guy from it was the seat bottom was in Texas and another guy who's another enthusiast picked up the seat bottom along with some other things he was coming out this way and delivered them to me at a show so it was pretty incredible, you know, you get these guys all come together, you know, and, and you kind of, tr you have to have some trust, you know, there's some, you're going, man, you know, is this guy really going to send these? So we got the seats finally, it was pretty cool. And they did all the sewing and myself, um, all the 100% restoration I did, other than a couple friends helped on different issues, and I have a friend at the head machine, he, well, he's, we haven't done the heads on this one yet, but we're going to do the heads and over at his shop and, you know. Worked as a VW guy a long time ago, and it's all changed. Everything's not the same, you know. I worked in a VW shop, you know, a long time ago. I was an ASC master artist technician, so I knew a lot about cars. But again, like I said, it, it's still it's not like just repairing a new car. It's you know everything. It's nothing. <laughs> Alright guys, this is what she looks like now. We're still working on it. Need to get bumpers. Of course, I'm waiting for funds, so that's kind of where we're at now. Got the upholstery in, just got the seats done. And the steering wheel's in. I still need a horn button. Those aren't cheap. So I got that to come in pretty soon. We'll be doing some more videos. I got some paint touch-up issues to do. Yeah, she's looking really nice. I got the uh, running boards here have the rubber tops. They have this little void there of the lines going across. They're not the regular cheap running boards. Um, this is the original color. I matched it. If you saw in the video, the door panels um, were off and I was, the center section, I did not paint. So the center section on the doors, it was exactly the same color and it blended in perfect. I didn't have to blend it or anything. I just painted around the doors. I'll show you. I just sprayed right here and then whatever overspray hit down into here, here a little bit because there was some primer. I had to cover that. But this whole section in here is original paint still behind the door panels. I still have the carpet and the original mats. Um, the original carpet, well, I'm going to be redoing that. That's a hundred and some odd dollars a yard. So that's on hold as well. But I do have the original mats. So I may fix those. 
We'll do that later in other future videos. The engine's not rebuilt. I just cleaned it up and put it in here. Um, I was planning on doing like a complete rebuild on it. I, I don't know if I'm going to have the money for that. These are really expensive engines to rebuild. Um, I'm hoping this video will help us fund a little bit of that stuff. So that's why I'm putting it up here now. But uh, the engines, I do have valves. I may just rebuild the top end uh, in the near future. So stay tuned for that video. And we'll see the top end get rebuilt. And I can probably get it running a little bit better. It's not running the greatest right now. Just kind of real noisy exhaust. Some of those things I may just do some something with the exhaust and the heads in the near future. And we'll get it to sound okay and run decent. You know, I don't know how good the bottom end is as far as the oiling and all that, but it doesn't it doesn't knock or anything, so it might while last quite a while. You know, so anyway, so we'll take a look at that later. Yes, these are the original tail lights. Uh, this car had all the original metal was there, um, except for this fender. This fender I used another uh, original fender, of a later model, and it just welded up all the holes and put the taillights in and yes they're a little bit crooked and that's the way they were originally because this one had the original holes in it and it's a little bit crooked it was like this because these came with heart taillights as well as those egg taillights the egg taillights were american spec and the heart taillights weren't so i'm gonna put the overrider style bumpers like on the blue bug over here uh, because this one actually came with those, which is quite unique. Um, it, most of them came with the European bumpers, except the American spec cars. I, I, it was kind of a tradition at that point. It wasn't really um, something that you would get. You know, uh, and it had they ordered them that way, but it wasn't required by uh, DOT or anything. But in later in later 55 this is a 54 this was shipped to the u.s and delivered in 55 built in 54 and uh the the, the like i said it didn't require it until late 55 which was around i think april or may somewhere in there when they started putting the overrider bumpers on they actually made a different car so this is an early uh, it's a 54 but the same as a early 55 they're the same same car so anyway this is what it looks like under here i'm still gotta do a spare tire for it still gotta put the cover on here oh, and this goes on down below here that is the original even the brake master cap uh you don't know what i'm gonna do with the glove box yet i'm and gotta get stuff like the speedometer to work, a few little details to do, and clean it up a little more, of course. And I got some more buffing to do, polishing on the car just a little bit, and some touch up in the paint. So, anyway. But that's where we're at. And this is original, too. That wasn't even a repop. They make them re reproduction, but that one's an original one. Hood shut's pretty good. You guys notice the metal work here? Turned out pretty good. This was really bad. That was extremely hard to fix. And here on this side turned out pretty good. Not bad looking. Really hard to get all those compound. We had a compound angle this way, one going that way, you know. And this is arched over. And I was able to get that pretty good. And the inside of it looks pretty good too. So anyway. Anyway, the car turned out pretty nice. And, you know, we're going to be doing some more builds. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, but stay tuned. You know, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And, uh. I'll talk to you later.